Representation matters. But as indigenous Chicano people, we can't just sit back and wait for mainstream media outlets to make it happen for us. And nor should we. We started the Tales from Aztlantis podcast because we believe that it is imperative for Chicanos, Chicanas, and Chicanex people to produce our own media and tell our own stories. And the way we choose to do this is by using Buzzsprout to host the podcast. Buzzsprout is by far the easiest and best way to launch a professional podcast. You'll get a podcast website, audio players that you can drop into other websites, detailed analytics to see how people are listening, tools to promote your episodes, and much more. To start your own podcast and get a $20 Amazon gift card, follow the link in the show notes. This lets Buzzsprout know that we sent you and helps support the show. Buzzsprout, the easiest way to start a podcast. Now, on with the show. You must excuse me. I've grown quite where I... This hasn't been easy, I know. But you've learned a lesson. A lesson in honesty. Honesty to yourself and honesty to others. That lesson will stand you in good stead all your life. I, I think we've all learned a good lesson. I've always heard that honesty is the best policy. Now I'm catching on to why that's so, why that's so, why that's so, why that's so, why that's so. Greetings, dear listeners, and welcome to yet another episode of Tales from Aslantis. I am your host, Curly Tlapoyawa, and I will be flying solo on today's episode, so I hope that you enjoy it. Today we're going to be going into a topic that I find really fascinating, as it's an argument that I often see made on social media whenever somebody makes a post about the Aztecs or the Azteca, somebody will always chime in claiming that that word was never used. So in today's episode, we're going to dig into this claim and find out for ourselves, did the word Azteca exist prior to colonization? Aztec or Mexica? Whenever some well-meaning individual posts a link to an article about any aspect of Aztec history to social media, they are inevitably met with a barrage of comments that usually sound something like this. Actually, they never called themselves Aztecs. They called themselves Mexica. That refrain or something very similar to it, has been repeated time and time again by countless Chicanos, Mexicanos, cultural practitioners, historians, archaeologists, etc. for who knows how long. Hell, even I used to say it about 20 to 25 years ago. Back then, the argument started innocently enough, I suppose. We didn't call ourselves Aztecs. That's what an anthropologist called us because they didn't know what we called ourselves. And that, in turn, turned into an anthropologist coming up with that name as an umbrella term to lump all of the people of the Valley of Mexico together. That further changed to a white anthropologist who decided to call us that. And then that white anthropologist became more specifically European. At some point, we even managed to identify the culprit who dared sully us with a name not of our own. And that perpetrator was identified as none other than Alexander von Humboldt. In fact, people have become so confident that the above is true that the new chorus, with all the certitude in the world, is that Alexander von Humboldt is to blame for the very existence of the word Aztec or Azteca, a word that was presumably never uttered by our people. But... Is this really true? Is the word Aztec or Azteca solely an invention of 18th century scholars? Well, not exactly. First, while it is true that Alexander von Humboldt and later William H. Prescott popularized the term Aztec in the 19th century, they weren't the first to use it. Their predecessor was a Mexican Jesuit teacher, scholar, and historian, Francisco Javier Clavijero, 
who decades earlier in his Historia Antigua de Mexico, first published in 1780 in German and later translated into English in 1787, wrote, The Aztecas or Mexicans, who were the last people who settled in Anahuac, which was roughly the whole of central Mexico, and are the chief subject of our history, lived until about the year 1160 of the vulgar era in Aztlan. So, neither Humboldt nor Prescott were the first to use the term in popular European literature. And secondly, and I believe most importantly, Nawa noble and grandson of Motexoma Xocoyotzin, Hernando de Alvarado Tesosomoc, who lived between 1525 and 1610, used the term Azteca numerous times in his famed Crónica Mexicayot, which, to be clear, was written in both Nahuatl and Spanish. Likewise, writing in both Nahuatl and Spanish, and also using the term Azteca repeatedly, is Domingo Francisco de San Anton Muñón Chimalpaín Cuautle Huanitzin, who lived roughly between 1579 and 1660. He was also of indigenous blood and said to descend from Chalco nobility. The Crónica Mexicayot is believed to have been written around 1598. Exact dates for Chimalpaín's writings are difficult to pin down, although they likely follow Tesosomoc's given that Chimalpaín was born over 50 years later. By contrast, Alexander von Humboldt wasn't born until 1769, over 100 years after the death of Chimalpaín and more than 150 years after the death of Tesosomoc. So, I think we can clearly say that it wasn't von Humboldt who first used the word Azteca. So, let's see what the sources written by Tetzosomoc have to say. Here are a few examples from the Crónica Mexicayot illustrating Tetzosomoc's use of the term Azteca. Iniquisque in Chichimeca, in Azteca, inicompa walquisque incan astlan, y panse tecpat shiwitl. This translates as, when the Chichimecas, the Aztecas, came out, then from there to here, they left Aztlan, their dwelling in the year one flint. Later he says, Awinompa kinka nitokayo san Aztlan, yeika inintoka Azteca, iwaninompa ininchan inikontla mantli itokayokan, chikomostok. Aw ininintoka Azteca, iwaninintoka meshitin. Awin Ashkan Melawakin Mitoa Inintoka Mexica, which translates as, And there, their dwelling, the place called Aztlan, that is what its Azteca name is. And there, their dwelling is called by a second name, Chico Mostoc. And there, they are called Azteca and Mexica, or Mexitin, as he writes. And today, in truth, they are only called their name as. Mexica. He goes on to say later, Au in Walponoque in Aztlan in Azteca Mexitin, Asico Oncan in Colhuacan. And when the Aztecas crossed over here from Aztlan, the Mexica came there to Colhuacan. And finally, I point to this example, Au Yukito Tiwi in Wewetke. Inompa Aztlan, Ik Walkiske in Azteca, Ayema, Intocatka Mexitin, Sanno Kishkich, Ik Monoza in Icasteca, Auyekin, Oncaninin, Titlatoa in Kikuike, Intoca in Ik Yemonoza Mexitin, Auyin Yuki, in Ikik Mahsoke, In Yukitiko Tiwi, Wewetke, this translates as, And according to what the old people came to say when the Aztecas came from there to here, they were not yet called Mexica. Just for that reason, they are called Azteca. 
And later we say this, they took their names. Then they are already called Mexica. And so when it was given to them, as the old people say, Huitzilopochtli gave them a name. And also forgive me for my horrendous readings of all the classical Nahuatl. And we will see reference to this as the Azteca being named by Huitzilopochtli later in the Codex Albin. We also see several instances of the word Azteca in the writings of Chimalpaín. And for these, I'm just going to tackle in English because I'm pretty bad at reading classical Nahuatl. And when the aforesaid Mexitin Azteca Teo Chichimeca had emerged and moved from their home in Aztlan, as they traveled and followed their way, as they traveled all over the land, they then reached a place named Huey Culhuacatepec. He goes on to say, At this time, initially, for the first time, the Mexica, Azteca, Teo Chichimeca ancestors bound their year at Tlalisco. And he further states, And when these said Mexica, Azteca, Teo Chichimeca arrived, reached, and assembled here in Mexico, Tenochtitlan. So, there you have it. Two indigenous Nahua nobles using the word Azteca long before the 1800s. By their usage of the term, it is clear that it was an umbrella term used to collectively define those who left Aztlan or Chicomostoc. So it was not an anthropologist, a white anthropologist, a white European anthropologist, Alexander von Humboldt, who made up the word. I would naturally assume that if Nahua nobles were using this term shortly after the fall of Tenochtitlan, it's probably safe to assume that it was used before then as well. And what about Mexica? Well, historically speaking, the Mexica identity is relatively young. It wasn't until after leaving Aztlan in the year Set Tecpat that the followers of Mexitli Huitzilopochtli adopted the name Mexica. And as I have just demonstrated, prior to this migration from Aztlan, the Mexica referred to themselves as Azteca, a term that simply means people of Aztlan in Nahuatl. Plate 8 of the Codex Albin makes note of the moment that one group of these Aztlan migrants was instructed by Huitzilopochtli to change their name. Aokan niman onkan okin kwepili in intoka in Azteca. Okimilwi in ashkan ayokmo amotoka in amasteca ye amexica. Onkan okin nakaspoto tinike inik okikwike in intoka in mexica. The Codex Albin, written in 1576. This translates to, and then. There he, referring to Huitzilopochtli, changed the name of the Azteca. He told them, you were no longer called Azteca. Now you are Mexica. There they put feathers in their ears. In this way, the Mexica took their name. Now, this is important for two reasons. First, it illustrates, once again, that the term Azteca was in use among native Nahuatl speakers at least as far back as 1576. Second, it shows that identity in pre cuauhtemoc Mesoamerica was fluid and not strictly based on a rigid concept of ethnicity like we have today. Francis Burdan has pointed out that Mesoamerican concepts of identity were intrinsically tied to the Altepet, or capital city, in which one lived. In Mesoamerica, multi-ethnic city-states emerged, with citizens adopting a common identity based on shared history and worldview rather than notions of shared ethnic descent. The practice of Assuming a group identity in order to claim affiliation to a founding leader or authority figure or ancestor was common in Mesoamerica. Book 10 of the Florentine Codex states, The name of the Otomit comes from, is taken from, the name of him who first became the leader of the Otomi. They say his name was Oton. 
his children, his descendants, and his subjects were all called Otomi, a single one, Otomit. As we can see, self-identification as an Otomi extended to the subjects of Oton, in addition to his direct descendants. Likewise, the Masawa are named after him who was their first leader, Masatektli. In both cases, Mesoamerican identity was forged via an emphasis on common history rather than strict blood ties. In the following passage from the Codex Chimalpain, it illustrates just how malleable identity in Mesoamerica could be. Their home was a place called Aztlan. Hence, their name was Azteca. And the second name of their home was Chicomostoc. And their names were Azteca and also Mexitin. But now, their name is really said to be only Mexica. And later, they arrived here, taking as their name, Tenochka. Eventually, their name would be changed once more to Culhua Mexica in order to reflect a noble Toltec heritage made legitimate through intermarriage and the installation of Acamapichtli as the first Tlatuani of Mexico Tenochtitlan. So, I guess the argument could be made that since the word Aztec is an anglicized form of Azteca, that von Humboldt did indeed popularize that version of the word, which is fine. But it would be disingenuous to claim that this is the argument being made. Instead, detractors claim that both terms are wrong and that Azteca was never used until it became popularized much later. So detractors claim that, you know, it's Aztec and Azteca are both incorrect and only Mexica should be used because they claim that Aztec and Azteca were invented by Alexander von Humboldt, which, as we've seen, is not true. As the historical record has shown us, this claim is just factually incorrect. Even if the word Azteca was not commonly used by Nahuatl speakers, it clearly predates the 1800s. Now, to be clear, none of this is to suggest that all the people in or around the Valley of Mexico called themselves Aztecs or Aztecas, nor to argue for the use of one term over the other, and especially not to dismiss the various names of the various peoples. I am simply pointing out that Azteca is a Nahuatl word and one that was used presumably well before the arrival of Europeans. In our quest to regain indigenous identities, we often over-romanticize, overreact, overreach, overcompensate, and over everything. In doing so, many have accepted many ideas that are told to them by teachers and elders, etc., without giving these things a second thought. As a result, we've come to accept as a fact a great number of things that are simply wrong and sometimes even easily disproven. We've unfortunately also dismissed many things that are correct, which are easily proven. We need to question everything. We need to think critically and don't fall into either one of those traps. Verify everything for yourself. Because as we have seen by examining the historical record, some of our ancestors did indeed call themselves Aztecas. Well, I hope you enjoyed this very short episode of Tales from Aztlantis. If you want to support the podcast, please check out our website, talesfromastlantis.com. There you can buy merchandise, you could buy books that we've published, you could get some cool t-shirts and swag, you could order stickers, and you can also sign up to be a Patreon supporter. For only $3 a month, you can support this podcast. In doing so, you'll receive access to our premium episodes. You'll get access to our Discord community, as well as access to a lot of other cool stuff that is only going to be released for our Patreon supporters. So I, I, once again, I hope you enjoyed this episode. And remember, the truth 
It's like medicine. It doesn't always taste good, but it's always good for you. Dimoitase. Thank you for listening to Tales from Atlantis, a project of the Chimali Institute of Mesoamerican Arts. If you enjoy the show, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter. You can do this by visiting talesfromastlantis.com and clicking support the podcast. Your continued support will help keep the podcast ad-free and independent. Until next time, dimoitase.